All right, this is day two of unit nine. Uh, you can consider this your anti-set, so you should pause the video and try to sketch these parametrically defined curves and then label the semi-major and semi-minor axes. Uh, just that vocab alone should tip you off that these should be ellipses. So try to sketch those ellipses and pause the video. And when you unpause, I will skip to the answers. Okay, so here we go. We have five cosine t, two sine t. Looks like this. Okay, and you should label the five as the semi-major. And then label the two as the semi-minor axis of these ellipses. So that's two, and then that's five. All right, and then down here we have seven sine t, four cosine t. So again, seven is the semi-major and then four is the semi-minor. Didn't color code at that time, but that's okay. Um, except for when I tried to write black on black. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. Seven sine t, four cosine t creates an ellipse with a, a seven semi-major of four semi-minor and five cosine t, two sine t creates a semi-major of five and a semi-minor of two. Now note that if you were to make this number bigger than this number, it makes an ellipse that is more vertically elongated, but because the x value has the higher amplitude, it makes it more horizontally elongated. So you can go to this link to watch an animation of this um, parametric path, but I'm going to go ahead and write a link down here for you that you can just go to to quickly access it. Uh, you can always find these slides in the Google Doc and our team drive, but here, let me just write this link out for you. So you can go to url.peak2peak.org slash hyperbola to see this animation. And just as you watch it, what do you notice? And then do your best to sketch the path of the animation. And this is the animation of secant t tangent t. Okay, so think back to triangles. So it says partner talk because I forgot to change it, but you can just stop and think what ratio did secant represent and what ratio did tangent represent? So then try to think about what happens to secant as the input becomes larger and same thing with tangents. So even though in this parametric situation we're letting t represent time, you can still think about secant theta and tangent theta because no matter what the input represents, no matter whether it represents an angle or time, the output is still going to have the same behavior. So think about as the angle changes, how does that affect the ratio with secant and the ratio with tangent? So you may recall that secant goes with the ratio hypotenuse over adjacent because it's the reciprocal of cosine, right? Seek, 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 ha, 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 ha. Okay, and then tangent, you may remember, is the ratio of opposite to adjacent. So when we think about what happens with our x value and our y value, it's really going to be equivalent to thinking about what happens in a triangle as the angle gets bigger, what happens to the hypotenuse over adjacent, and as the angle changes, how does that affect the opposite over adjacent? So what we can do is we're going to go to our four different quadrants of the circle because then we can think about what's the behavior in the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. So I'm dividing this up based on the unit circle because again, if we're dealing with triangle ratios, it's gonna help us picture what happens to secant and tangent as the inputs change. So obviously in our unit circle, we have zero, we have pi over two, we have pi, we have three pi over two, and we have two pi. So we're gonna go zero to pi over two, pi over two to pi, pi to three pi over two, three pi over two to two pi, and we're gonna see what happens to secant and tangent in each of those four quadrants. So go ahead and pause if you need a second to copy down this uh, chart here. And then when you're ready to go, we'll start talking about how to fill it in. So we're gonna start with secant. And we're gonna start from zero to pi over two. So I'm gonna argue that secant from zero to pi over two goes from one to infinity. And how we're gonna argue this is we're gonna draw our unit circle and then we're going to draw a small angle, and then we're going to draw an angle that's closer to pi over 2, because our angle is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So if we zoom in on this, notice that the hypotenuse, oops, that's not the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, when the angle is smaller, are really close to being the same length. And since we're taking a ratio, h over a is going to be 
close to one because they're about the same. So when we divide them, we get an output that's about close to one, right? The smaller the angle is, the closer the hypotenuse is in length to the adjacent side. But then as we let that angle become bigger, okay, so notice we can zoom in even more on this circle. Okay, notice how this angle is getting bigger. Okay, that angle is approaching pi over 2. Well, now we have the hypotenuse is way bigger than the adjacent. So when we divide by a small adjacent, that's going to produce a bigger output, right? Like just picture doing something like, let's say we have a hypotenuse of 3 and an adjacent side of like 0 0.0001, right? That's going to be big. And the smaller the adjacent side is, the bigger this ratio is going to be. So as that angle approaches pi over 2, secant is going to have to approach infinity. So we're going to argue that secant goes from 1 to infinity from 0 to pi over 2. So now let's go pi over 2 to pi and make a similar argument. So here's pi over 2 to pi. I'm going to argue that it goes from negative infinity to negative 1. So if we go, come down here now, again, here's our adjacent, here's our hypotenuse. It's the exact same picture as up here, but it's just flipped. And over here, the adjacent is negative because we're on our negative x-axis over here. So now instead of it being positive infinity, it's going to be negative infinity. All right? So that's when our angle is still close to pi over 2, but now in the second quadrant, going from pi over 2 to pi. So then if we let our angle keep approaching pi, okay, now again we have our adjacent side and our hypotenuse are really close to being the same length. So it's very similar to this picture up here, but again, the adjacent side is negative, so instead of it being 1, it's going to be negative 1. So now our x value goes from negative infinity to negative 1. So you may have noticed in that animation that, uh, I mean, you have your picture that looks like it's going to end up looking like this. Okay, you may have noticed that the point started at 1 and went to infinity, and then it like popped down here and did this thing, right? So it went shoop, shoop. Okay, that's what's happening here. Our x is going from 1 to infinity, and then once it hits infinity, it pops down to negative infinity and approaches negative 1. So then let's think about what happens in the other two quadrants now. Pi to 3 pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can draw similar pictures that I've drawn for these first two examples to try to uh, show that from pi to 3 pi over 2, the output's going to go from 1 to infinity again, and then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, it's going to go from negative infinity to negative 1. All right, so hopefully you uh, tried that out, and now let's see if we can draw it. So first we're going to start with an angle that's close to pi, because we're going from pi to 3 pi over 2. So here's our triangle. So what do we have? We have our, just like before, our hypotenuse and our adjacents, are close to being the same. Okay, it's this picture, it's this picture, right? But what we have now, that's not letting me move. Okay, what we have now is both the adjacent. So what we have is again the adjacent side is negative again, right? So when we divide this, this is actually going to be negative one. So we should adjust this and say this goes from negative one. Okay. So uh, I'll do a better job of drawing that negative sign. Negative 1. So it goes from negative 1 to negative infinity. So we'll draw our next picture to show why it goes to negative infinity. So we went from 1 to infinity, and then we went from negative infinity to negative 1. Next step is go to go from negative 1 to negative infinity. So, um, so let's draw our next picture, where now the angle is going to get closer to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so then there's our triangle where again, our adjacent side is really small compared to our hypotenuse, and our adjacent side is still negative. So when we do h over a, it's going to go to negative infinity again. Again, it's this picture, it's this picture, it's this picture. Same idea, just whether it's positive or negative. Well, the adjacent side is still negative over here. So the ratio itself is going to be negative. So we have to say this goes from negative 1 to, let's uh, say, negative infinity, not infinity. Okay, last step. Negative infinity, so this is, yeah, again, this is messed up. I apologize for that. This is going to be adjusted, and let's see why. Let's look at our picture. So now we draw our triangle over here where our angle is close to 3 pi over 2. And again, that adjacent side is going to be small over here. Adjacent side small. What? The drawing is really not working very well right now. There we go. So there's the adjacent. So the adjacent side is really small compared to the hypotenuse again. But now this time the adjacent side is positive over here because that's our positive x-axis. Adjacent is positive. So now we're going to go back to positive infinity. Not negative infinity. Just uh, here we can just uh, 
erase this minus sign there. Okay, positive infinity. Okay, and then last picture, we're gonna let our angle approach two pi now, three pi over two to two pi. And then again, this is that same picture where the adjacent side and the hypotenuse are really close to being the same length. Again, so the ratio is gonna go back to being positive one. So what happens to x? x goes from being one to infinity, negative infinity to negative one, negative one to negative infinity, and infinity to positive one. So let's go back and look at that picture one more time of the hyperbola. Okay, so remember in that animation, we started at one, we went to infinity. Okay, we go from one to infinity. Then it popped down and it went negative infinity to negative one. And then it went negative one back to negative infinity, and then it popped down and went infinity back to one. So constantly what's happening is this point goes shoop, 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 and just keeps, when it, whenever it hits one infinity, it pops back to the other infinity. Okay, so we just went through the exercise of showing that x goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to, or negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to negative infinity, and infinity to 1. So we need to do something similar with tangent. So I want you to draw the circles to show what is happening to tangent as it goes from 0 to pi over 2, pi over 2 to pi, pi to 3 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So here we go. We have to draw our circle. And okay, so when we have a small angle, then the ratio of opposite to adjacent is going to be small because the opposite side is small, right? The smaller the angle, the smaller the opposite side. But if we make that angle bigger, that's going to make the opposite side bigger and the adjacent side smaller. So then that's going to take our opposite to, uh, uh, opposite to adjacent to infinity. So we're going to start by going zero to infinity. And then next up, Okay, we draw our angle that's a little bit bigger than pi over 2, and now the opposite over adjacent is still infinity, but because the adjacent side is uh, negative, now it's going to be negative infinity, and then as that angle approaches 0, that opposite side is going to get smaller again, just like it was up here, so then it's going to go negative infinity to 0. Okay, so I'm not going to actually go through the picture for pi to 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. I can leave that as an exercise, but here is the filled in tangent, 0 to infinity, negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity, negative infinity to 0. So in our picture, what we should think about with that hyperbola, okay, remember before we were talking about the x value going from 1 to infinity, negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to negative infinity, and then infinity back to 1. Now think of the y value. Vertically, what's happening? Vertically, we start at being zero and go to infinity. And then we're going to go from negative infinity back to zero. Again, looking at the vertical values. And then zero back to infinity. And then negative infinity back to zero. So that's the y value. So together, that traces this path that causes this hyperbola. See what's happening to x. See what's happening to y. And that tells you the path. So remember, all these curves are directional. So we start at being one, we go off to infinity, and we can show that with arrows. So this is the last part of this first part of the lesson that I want you to get down is this picture. Use colors if you can, showing what's going on uh, as our input changes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, we start by going 1 to infinity, so that's this section of the graph. And then we go from negative infinity to negative 1, and uh, y goes from negative infinity to 0. That's this section. And then we hit the red section next, and then we hit the yellow section next. And make sure you understand the order of these sections and why it makes sense. And you might want to go back and review the lesson again and make sure you, un like, re you un understand our arguments for these values and for these values, right? Because that's, that's really everything that goes into knowing the path of this object. And then again, you can go back to the animation if you want um, from earlier in the lesson if you want to see the, see the point actually move in space. So once you have this picture drawn, that is the end of the first part of this lecture, and you can move on to part two.